And we're back. Some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to be knocking out the last few achievements we've got going on. Oh, and tapping into this volcano. We want the resources from it so badly. But up here, the Great Escape. Send a duplicate on a one-way mission to the furthest star map destination. That's very doable. We'll be knocking that out in no time. Totally tubular. 10,000 meters via transport tube. Should be fairly handy. And mine the gap, which we are still working on industriously, but we still have... 350 tons of mining to go, but for now we're going to go over to Postilino, this uh, postulant planet here, which has the lovely experimental tree and a friend. We are going to let that friend out. And, oh, wait, never mind, we have, who is it? Malena Nighthawk. Now this was suggested to me in the comments. Lock the duplicates into the ship, uh, use your newest duplicates and just let them run on a wheel while they're piloting. This way your trainees don't aren't wasting their time. They're training while piloting and getting everything all in one. Excellent idea. I'm stealing that for all future playthroughs. A uh, quick upskill here for Melina and they've got the digging necessary. Uh, we should probably disable that building. Yeah, there you go. Now, get around to digging them out. There is enough atmosphere here that you don't even need an atmo suit to come down here and do that. And we'll get down a ladder system so that you can get the duplicate in and out. All right, let's defrost our friend here and see how they're doing. Welcome to the real world, buddy. Uh, okay, stop mimicking each other so much. That's that's just crazy. All right, is that a, a second duplicate of the same type? I can't even tell. Hey, hey stop standing there. Oh, yeah, Drivaldo, let's see what kind of skills you got going on. Ancient knowledge starts with three points. Small bladder, that's okay. Vomiter, no worries. Uh, balloon artist. That's all fine. Personal interests, rocketry. Uh, so they have an 8 in piloting and nothing else. Hmm. Trivaldo, how do you feel about, uh, you know, exploration and temporal tears? I think you would make... We have a, a excellent, excellent opportunities for you in our um, non-returnable research institute. We'll just get you both loaded back in. Uh, ooh, that reminds me. We have to pick a, a name for our newest duplicate. Please welcome Zachary Zeno to the team. Uh, however long your stay on the team may be. In fact, their piloting skill is so good, we might just let them fly the ship back. All right, let's get this all sorted and get you launched. I would like it noted that this rocket was plenty small enough for the, the landing pad this time round. We didn't have to make another round trip. And bye-bye. Thanks for everything. See you another time. All right, and back over here. Uh, yes, over here we're going to try and put ourselves together a nice... A uh, volcano heat extractor. The steam pressure in here is getting quite, quite high. It's like 400 to 500 kilos in spots. And this is still venting, but this volcano will only vent up to about 150 kilos of pressure. So we need to make sure that the steam doesn't get in here or it'll stifle the volcano. But we still need to get the magma out so that its heat can, you know, help heat up the steam and generate us power. While we're waiting to get the outline of this done, we're going to do a little bit of rerouting on some of our water. Uh, the output water here was dropping all the way down here to cool the the magma at the bottom, or the very hot rocks at the bottom. Now we're going to have that shunt over here and have all that water and the salt water guys are all poured down here. We're going to make a cooling tray for all of our hot magma rock. All right, but while that is going on... Ah, yes. We have a printing pod activation. And I was thinking, I do like the look of this one. Construction, machinery, and athletics all in one build. Why not? I'm going to try pronouncing this as Pal David Gurgley. Gurgly, it, it sounds like something you would do with the liquid is, you know, you'd gurgle it. All right, uh, they're newest recruit. In fact, I think, I think we've got a rocket just for them. We do have another, well, we have a hydrogen-based rocket, all good to go. And I think this can be their new location to live at. They're all set up nicely there. I think they can run, do everything they want, play the whole nine yards. And I'm thinking for mining, I was thinking astro oxidized asteroid field. 80% rust, and we can take that rust and turn it into iron, which we can then turn into steel, so that's the main reason for going there. We effectively could mine any of the asteroid chunks out here, but since these closer ones can all be hit up by our rad-powered rockets, the only ones that really matter are, say, these ones out on the edge, like the ice asteroid field or the glimmering one, but we've already hit those up, and of all the remaining ones, these two are the only ones that actually have any mass of 20 tons or greater. And I don't really need any more carbon dioxide, ice, oxygen, or methane. And, well, this carbon dioxide is just going to get fed to our sixters one way or the other. Yeah, I, I, I think we know exactly where they're going. Good luck, little rockety. Uh, actually, are you are you going to get out of there? Come on. Oh, wow, they are 
incredibly slow. <laughs> well, it's okay. That's why we've got them running on the wheel. Off you go. Eh, perfection. Now, I believe we were building ourselves some sort of weird-looking volcano tamer down here. I think we can get this to work. By putting down a blob of naphtha right there, we have managed to block all of the gases from getting in, meaning it is a complete vacuum over here. Now, I don't want to rely on that too heavily. That could become problematic long term. So we're going to, uh, well, it's just I'm worried that if a drop of liquid comes down here, it could shatter that. So I think what we'll do is we'll put another tile right about there. That means any liquids hit there, they won't overflow or accidentally get in here somehow and mess up that nap into lock. Oh, and also let's make that one tile deeper. And then once we've got these uh, little bits hammered out, we can start expanding this out in here. And the thing is, I didn't want to reveal the volcano until after we'd gotten all of this in place, because, well, getting four, well, 500 kilos of gas pressure out of here would take an eternity with gas pumps. We'd have to, like, pump in a liquid or something instead. Oh, damn it, I shouldn't have revealed that. Uh, it's dormant. It's dormant. It's okay, it's dormant. That's fine. That's fine. Whew. For a second there, I thought we were going to be in trouble. If that was actually active, that would have made this thing an awful lot more interesting, let's just say. All right, we are going to need some mesh tiles as well for what we have in store here. The plan here is incredibly simple. I, I really can't overstress that enough. Uh, we're going to have the magma pop out of here, pour across here, and drop down in between these mesh tiles. And what happens is, is when the magma hits this tile here, it's going to share its temperature diagonally with this diamond temperature shift plate, sucking the heat out of it, turning it into uh, igneous rock chunks. Now, not actually a solid tile, just igneous rock chunks. Those igneous rock chunks, since they can't appear here, will eventually get sh shunted out the side and end up dropping down here where all of our water will pour down on top of it and hopefully cool it down. Now, if we've messed up... Oh my god, what are you, what are you guys doing? Oh, damn it. Did you go and pick up all of the abyss light and stuff around here and dump it into that? And get all the obsidian as well and igneous rock while you're at it. I want to clear this place out and then I want to wall it in again. Just so that we don't have to worry about, well, this somehow getting flooded with steam. We'll leave the nap to liquid lock there just in case we ever need to service the place, but this should be fine. Oh, do we have any scientists actually? We have our head researcher back in Zap. They can, uh, where are they? Ah, here they go. They're going to finish off analyzing that volcano. Once they're done, we can send them back out on another mission. Their last mission has been rather successful. They've brought back a whole bunch of wolframite and some coal, whatever, we, we, we don't care about the coal. But the other thing they brought back was, well, four tons of tungsten, but in liquid format. So let's just empty that out and uh, maybe have it brought over here. That might be the best thing to do. Uh, yeah, let's make that a priority nine. Uh, what does that land on? Yeah, it's cooling maybe a bit faster than I would like. You know what? Let's put a quick obsidian tile underneath it and uh, maybe let it rest on a insulated tile. That might make more sense. Otherwise, I'm going to end up burning that steel. Oh, no. It's actually cooling down now? You know what? I give up trying to figure it out. As long as we dump it all in here. Oh, well, copy paste that. We should be able to get about four tons of tungsten out of that and about 12 tons of wolframite, which we're also going to turn into tungsten. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of tungsten, which we're going to turn into a lot of niobium. Well... Oops. So, turns out we might want to have been more careful with the tungsten. Uh, yeah, you know what, let's, uh, yeah, we're losing half the mass for digging this stuff out. That's bad. That's, that's not good. Okay, we should probably make a few storage bins here for the stuff, get it out of the way, and then figure out a way of dropping it that doesn't result in it instantly forming tiles. God damn it. All right, I, I managed to get this system up and running, but uh, it turns out it just formed a, a solid block. The liquid turned into a block for some reason, so we've mined it out, lost half the mass. Rather frustrating, but whatever, we've still got a fair bit of tungsten. Now, before we go refining that into thermium, we need to start messing with our power supplies. Our power keeps dipping too much. I'm beginning to think we're redlining our grid. If too many things are running at once, it causes problems. So it's time we started swapping out this polluted water cooling loop for, say, super coolant or something like that, which is far more energy efficient. Uh, this one here has an uptime of, well, about 1% in the last five cycles, so no point. This one here has an uptime of about 30%, 30, 32 to 35%. That seems like something we should fix. So we have to figure out where we're going to inject the super coolant and pull off the polluted water. It could be a little bit tricky considering that piping mess. 
Yeah, give me a minute. Before we get a chance to do all of this, uh, too many rockets have landed and we need to get them rotating so that we're getting more cargo down so that we're closer to the achievement. Uh, this rocket is going to go back out to the glimmering asteroid field to bring us back more tungsten. That was so successful the last time that I want to try it again. Uh, that's them gone. Uh, let's hope they don't incinerate anything too badly there on takeoff. It's fine, they already melted one of these manual airlocks, but that's fine. Yeah, no, kept that time around. We'll have to put in a more permanent solution once we've knocked out the achievements, but uh, we'll worry about that when the time comes. Over here we've got Zack. Uh, Zack is our newest recruit and they're going on a mission. Their mission is to go to the Temporal Terror. Now, you may be wondering why we're sending them on this journey when it says here quite clearly that that is 11 tiles out of 20, meaning they have no way of making it back. But that's okay, because this is a one-way mission and we don't have to worry about them making it back, which means we don't need to spend an expensive rocket. We can just send them on this little squat one. In fact, uh, we may be giving them too much food and rads, rad pills, but that is fine. Only the best. Only the absolute best. Are you fueled? Why, why are you saying you're not fueled? You're definitely fueled. You are maxed out at 4,000 rad bolts. Oh, you're warning that you won't have uh, yeah, the option to get back. You know what? That's okay, buddy. Go do what you gotta do. Bye-bye now. And, oh, on your way you managed to incinerate Tesserex. Tesserex. That's fine. That happens to him every single time he lands. Uh, remind me to send him back to the hospital. I think we are finally ready to start cycling out the old polluted water and upgrading to uh, super coolant on this line. So over here we are going to put on this bridge. That's going to pull the polluted water out of the cooling loop and dump it down here, which... Oh, wow, that is actually jam-packed at the moment. You know what? We shall turn you off. Uh, yeah, and we'll probably have to turn this one off as well. Oh, we can't turn that one off. Actually, we can disable the building. Perfect. We can disable both of those. That should cut off the flow of... Oh, God. Well, it, it will eventually cut off the flow of water. And that should mean that now what will happen is the water from here is going to get sucked down. And then the gaps will be filled with super coolant. Probably. Well, not entirely. It's going to be a bit of a mix and a mess at the start. But as this continues, we'll slowly be draining out the polluted water and replacing it with super coolant. And eventually the whole loop will just be super coolant. Though this could take a few minutes. Oh, the whole reason for this little loop here is eventually we're going to see super coolant start coming back around. We don't want to remove the super coolant. So this filter ensures that we only take off the polluted water and the polluted water gets dumped down here and none of the supercoolant should ever get ripped off the line, just the polluted water. In fact, here comes some supercoolant right now, and if you'll notice, it goes right by, no harm, no foul. This is one of the few ways I've got of actually replacing loops, well, replacing old cooling loops with newer supercoolant. We're going to have to do the same thing with this cooling loop over here, though. That's a low priority. The higher priority would be this cooling loop down here that's using nuclear waste. This is only a small gain though with this one. For example, nuclear waste has, where is it? It's a uh, specific heat capacity is 7.4. The supercoolant is 8.4. So it's, uh, what, 10%, 20%, 15%, 15 something like that. It's, it's not as much of a change for that one. And hey, guys, anyone want to get me some supercoolant here? That's it. That's an empty tank. That means we're draining coolant and not replacing it. I think we have enough supercoolant on there. There's, what, 730 kilos in the tank? I think that'll be fine. We're just draining off the last of the polluted water now. The whole thing is... Yeah, we'll give this another couple of minutes and it should be running clean. Liquid tank is empty of all polluted water. We've only got, well, 600 kilos of super coolant in there. Uh, there's a few gaps still on the line, but they're ironing themselves out. And down here we can deconstruct that bridge. Uh, set that to zero. And then we can finally clean the, this all of this gunk out. Right now, we do have something good going for us. That is... The amount of rockets we've got harvesting materials from space. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and well, that one's actually going on a one way. But we've got seven rockets harvesting material. Harvesting. That gives us about 140 tons of material per round trip for all of them. And we need 300 more tons. Well, 307 more tons. And I try and want to get this knocked out by 730 cycles. I think we put together another rocket. Uh, an eighth rocket wouldn't go astray. We can just chuck one down over here, make it a Radbolt 1. We, we've got a spare pilot lying around the place.
while we finish off this rocket and get the insides or the guts of it built out, there is something that's about to happen. About 12 seconds from now. Old Inspiring Venus... Old Inspiring Venus 2 is just about to hit the temporal tear. And I've got to imagine it's going to be something... odd. Or... not. I was kind of expecting a little bit more from that, to be honest. Um... So, is that it? Sh should that not have knocked out the achievement? What am I missing here? Send a duplicate on a one-way mission to the furthest star map destination. Wait a minute. Yep, there, there's a, a giant button here that says enter temporal tear. That, that, that would be the button I'm supposed to hit. What the? Can I even see what's going on there? Damn it, I wish I had zoomed in a bit closer. Never mind. Alert. Imperative achieved. The Great Escape. Oh, oh yeah, I should really go back and fix that place up at some point. Later. Later. It's fine. Yes, 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 we know. All of the colonies are absolute trash, except for our main one. All the others are just, you know, temporary living facilities where we scavenge some resources. And oh my god, there's a whole bunch of morbs there. Oh yeah, the toilet's blocked and... Yeah, if you leave a toilet blocked, every time you reload the game, it keeps spitting out another morb after 10 cycles or something like that. Godspeed, dupe. You were only with us for a short time. Let's see what you find on the other side. We have always viewed the Temporal Terror as a phenomenon to fear. But, like the civilizations before us, the call to adventure asked us to confront our anxiety and leap into the unknown. As a radical action of hope, I have sent enough duplicates through the temporal tear to start another colony, explore dimensions beyond ours, and plant the seeds of life throughout time and space. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Excellent. The Great Escape is knocked out. That just leaves us with Totally Tubular and Mind the Gap. And Mind the Gap, that's going to... <laughs> Two achievements. And about 20 cycles to do them all in. We could maybe do this. Oh. And what is that? It looks like... Rocket debris? Oh, so the rocket broke up and then everything that was a part of the rocket is now getting fired to the closest planet, which is Dampona. All right. Well, looks like they're going for a swim. Mm. Yeah, oh, that broke. I maybe should have reinforced that liquid lock, but hey, it wasn't a priority at the time. Anyway, we've only got a few things left to do. Let's see if there's any good duplicates. No, I don't like any of you. In fact, yeah, just mm, not worth it. With that rocket launched, I think that puts us to eight in orbit or eight out harvesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Yeah, that's... um. That's pretty good. In fact, we only have seven landing pads. Eh, we could put together a ninth rocket. No, no, you know what? It's going to leave it there. Now it's time to concentrate on getting power sorted so we can do the totally tubular. Now, I was going to replace this in here, but then I thought a simpler way to save power would be to disconnect this from the grid, this uh, oxygen production facility, and let the hydrogen actually power it. Because right now it's being powered off our main grid which is actually a huge chunk of power requirements. If we just deconstruct that tile there... Actually, let's go find the battery. Where is it? Oh, wow. Our power's actually fine at the moment. That's very unusual. Normally, our power fluctuates quite a bit. See, they were at 20 kilowatts. Let's see if it actually bothers to change itself at all while we're waiting. Never mind. But I swear, that was not how it was acting before. Anyway, uh, we will put you... If you are above... Yeah, there. You can take over hydrogen production. I turned this off ages ago, and it seems that these things can't overpressurize. So we have many, many hundreds of kilos of hydrogen in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking these, this Saturn Critter Trap idea. It's all powered by a, a beta hive. These beta hives are just fueling this with all of the food required. And all of that plant meat is going to get sent to a tree later on. All right, plan then. Now that gives us a little bit of power. I'm thinking maybe put in a little transport thing down here and then have it zigzag the whole way through the place to try and get as much distance as possible per launch. These things are pretty expensive in terms of power. Where do we put them? Ah, here we go. Transit tube access. 960 watts of power. Uh, yeah, down here seems fine, actually. Right there. Then what I think we're going to do is start deconstructing 
this section here. In fact, that can all go. Yeah. We're going to deconstruct all of this, and then we're going to figure out some way of snaking a whole bunch of pipes through here, carrying, the, carrying them as far as possible on a single charge. I think it's just about done, is it? Uh, nope, guys, guys. How about you don't get out of there at all? Oh, come on. Just, just stay there. Now, how are you going to get out? That's right, Brendan. You're taking the long route. All right, let's see how long it takes you. Uh, so we got one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven Mississippi, twelve Mississippi, thirteen Mississippi, fourteen Mississippi, fifteen Mississippi, sixteen Mississippi, and done. That was, uh, an excellent route. Oh, wait. Damn it, there's two that have gone through. Uh, ooh. Okay, we'll wait till the other one finishes as well. Okay, that's two down. So if we check on the colony summary, that we just have to have it to figure out how long that is. Uh, where are we? Uh, okay. Travel 10,000 meters before he travels 782 with two jumps through it. I think this is going to be rather easy and fast to get. In fact... I think this is going to be way too easy and fast to get. Let's, uh, ooh, yeah, let's do a quick level 8 sweep. Yeah, level 8 sweep should be fine. Right about there. That should summon people to come in here. Uh, question, though, is will it redline our grid? I have a smart battery up there for some reason I've forgotten about, but it doesn't matter. That's not the important bit. The important bit is that, yeah, everyone's... <laughs> Oh my god, I want a gif of that. It's a theme park. That's what it is. It's got the water slide thingy, but it's not actually water. It's air powered. Whatever. Uh, how long do you think it's going to take? In fact, I am just going to let this play out as normal in... Uh, well, actually, I might speed up time just a little bit just to see how long it takes us to actually knock this out. I had to have a quick stop there because the plants had stopped growing, which meant the water had stopped flowing, but I, I, I figured out what it was and solved it. Uh, let's see how much longer this takes. I think we got to be pretty close. And there we go. Colony achievement earned. I think we've hit the necessary. Yeah, totally tubular. That was incredibly quick to knock out. And did it... Redliner power grid. Ah, power grid's fine after all of that. In that case, we can now open these doors. And we can start deconstructing this stuff. Oh, e Actually, I don't want to deconstruct it while anyone's in it. Disconnect the power. That's a better idea. We'll disconnect the power on both ends. That way, no one can get stuck in the middle. I've heard horror stories of duplicates getting stuck in tubes and then just... They're just hovering midair and starve to death. Well, they don't actually starve. They just somehow sort of die there. Let's not risk that. All right, with that done, once we get those unpowered, we're going to start disconnecting all of the tubes so that no one can use this thing because it's a horrible waste of time. Oh, and we can cancel all of that sweeping. What uh, knocked out the water was I forgot to... I locked this out so people couldn't come in here to keep grabbing small pieces of polluted dirt, but they also couldn't deliver any sand, and after they went through 20 tons of sand, they, well, you know, there was no more water coming through. That's okay. It's fine. It's flowing again. The crops are growing. Food is getting watered, and our oxygen supply will soon be getting more oxygen. Oh, God. Yeah, we kind of dried out the whole lot. It's fine. It's fine. We can fix that, and oh, my God, it's magnificent. I don't think I've seen one of those before. It actually gives off its own little glow. Does the thing have a light? Is that a light source? It actually is a light source as well. Oh, perfect. we got to find some use. No, later, later. For now, we only have a few things left to do. Rock the rockets. That's it. All we gotta do is hammer through as many rockets as we possibly can and get it knocked out in the next 20 cycles. So let's see, what are we up to? We have 747 tons, meaning we only need 253 tons more. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. A quick skip forward and we're up to 833 tons down and, well, still 170 tons to go. That's... 
mm, I don't think we're going to make it by cycle 730. I really would have liked to. That's twice a year. Like two years is 730 days or well, cycles, whatever. Uh, but I don't think we're going to quite make it. I could start putting together more rockets, but well, there's several side projects I want to take care of. Uh, one of them is I, I dug out all the way around here to give more space. It's just uh, water started to accumulate there and uh, I decided to dig into some of that hot obsidian to make it all uh, evaporate. Uh, we're actually running out of heat in here. That's okay. That's okay. We've got uh, Wolfson to, Wolframite to tungsten going forever, iron to steel going forever, and uh, wow, well, we're almost out of iron ore. Um, why not? We'll go through the iron ore as well while we're at it. Also, we're making as much thermium as possible by combining the tungsten with niobium. Ah, nothing but just production, production, production. You know, normally I hold out until I've got three interests I'd like, but construction and supply is not the worst, and that handy for the plus three construction on top of that, that doesn't seem too bad. And we do need some more duplicates for our upcoming mass construction projects. So please welcome Sean P. Murphy to the team. We're going to be going, uh, actually, should we chuck them in a rocket? Hmm. We might cycle someone out of one of the rockets and put them in. That might be a good plan. Our newest recruit, Sean P. Murphy, is going to take off over for tugboat in here. Uh, they can run on this wheel for as long as is necessary. And, oh, they've actually been refueled already. And tugboat is currently getting scru skill scrubs so they can become uh, more productive members of the colony as opposed to just flying rockets about all the place. Though I think their skills at rocket piloting is absolutely insane at this point, considering how long they've been doing it for. Wow, a skill level of 18 in piloting base, plus two from the skills so 20 in piloting, 50% rocket speed increase. That's uh, pretty useful, actually. All right, uh, let me launch this rocket. Exit, that's 20 tons more mining completed. And over here, how are we looking? What do we bring back in this one? Rust and carbon dioxide. Well, yeah, whatever. We'll put that into storage somewhere. Uh, the carbon dioxide, I used to take all the carbon dioxide and put it down here and dump it into this section, but we're up to 600 kilos of pressure. And I'm just worried. So you know what? We're just going to leave that there and we're going to take all of this fresh carbon dioxide and dump it over here. Uh, this is where we're storing all our sol solid oxygen, uh, any ice we bring back and any methane. That can all get stored over there. So yeah, goodbye. And... Are you fueled all back up again? Yes, you are. Damn, we can fuel these things up and get them turned around pretty damn quick. So let's get the crew back on board and get them launched onto their next target. And there's another 20 tons of cargo that'll be brought back. Oh, eventually. And I don't know where that magma came from. Oh, and you'll notice here, I read this in the comments. You can actually build in these ladders after the fact. So right now we can't build a hydrogen engine there. Or wait, can we? Why is it allowing me to build a hydrogen engine now? I tested this earlier and it wouldn't let me. Okay, it won't let me here, but for some reason it is letting me here build a hydrogen engine. That makes absolutely no sense. That doesn't matter. We'll just cancel that hydrogen engine anyway. But uh, normally you can't get these ladder segments in here. But we were, were able to build them in after we launched the rockets and the rockets can actually land here. So hydrogen rockets can land here even though we've got these ladder segments going all the way to the bottom. Didn't know that was a thing, but yep, it actually works. Now, a couple other minor things we want to take care of. Uh, down here, we want to try and keep the chill in. We don't want these bees, you know, eventually freezing to, or not freezing to, getting so warm they die out. So we want to put in a proper liquid lock here, a vacuum seal, similar to the ones we've got set up over here. To, mm, I, I was trying to set one up and then I thought, you know what, we'll move it a little bit to the right and then we're going to get rid of all the carbon dioxide and chlorine and finish them off for good. We're, we're past the stage of just fixing things quickly and not and not worrying about the later consequences. We need to start putting in permanent solutions. The plan here is quite simple. We just need to, well, have some way of getting rid of all the carbon dioxide and chlorine that keeps showing up down here. Also, I've maybe made a little bit of a change here. I put a blob of nafta right there. That should stop any more gases getting in here. We'll have to extract the carbon dioxide that made it in already, but uh, this should make things a little bit simpler. Now, over here, we've got a liquid lock in place, or a Napta style liquid lock in place so no gases can exchange between these two areas and it should be a perfect vacuum seal meaning this place shouldn't really change in temperature anymore now all we need is uh, a little bit of co2 disposal which we can do with a quick carbon skimmer why not uh, an oldie but a goodie refinement wise we'll just throw in a quick water sieve as well oh god no need to make that out of steel that's a, a little bit too expensive right now we're going to quickly siphon off a little bit of water here from this section to get this started, we only need a tiny bit to begin with. Uh, we can deconstruct the liquid bridge. Temperature down here as well in the 20s now, so we don't have to worry about this freezing over, which we would have earlier on. Now, uh, how's this doing? Yeah, hey, someone want to go down and kill that bridge before this thing uh, ends up stifling itself by 
feeding too much water into the line. Should only take a minute. Come on. Someone? Anyone? No, never mind. No, no one's decided to do it. There we go. And down here we got a dash of salt vine, namely because it consumes chlorine. And there's small amounts of chlorine here. The chlorine will eventually get over to this and where it should get consumed. And what else are you missing? Oh, it also needs some sand. There we go. So now that it's got some sand, anytime it gets surrounded by chlorine, it should perk up and... Oh god, there's polluted oxygen down there. Ah, great. Hmm, how do we get rid of the polluted oxygen? You know what? We can we can stick down a deodorizer. It'd be fine. Eh, actually, we can't put it there. Can't, actually, I'm worried that if I put that deodorizer in there, it might push the naft out of the way. So instead, we'll stick the deodorizer over there. This whole thing will sort itself out eventually. And over here, I'm thinking... You know what, we can stick in a little gas pump right there, and... Hey, you, come here. And then what we will do is, we will get that gas to come get let out right over there. Actually, a regular gas vent should be just fine. That way, all of the carbon dioxide and stuff over here, we'll set up a little sensor, but any carbon dioxide, chlorine, anything like that will get dumped in here and then get dealt with on this side. We, we don't want to have to filter two separate areas. There, that should sort things out. Any carbon dioxide or chlorine will get sucked up by this gas pump, dumped over this side and dealt with over here. And then once this detects some oxygen, it'll go through this knot gate and go, nope, turn off. So if any oxygen gets in here, it'll eventually just shut down, meaning we should be able to drain out the last of this. Though I do want to get rid of the chlorine as well. You know what? Give me a couple of pumps here. I don't think we need the chlorine for anything, and if we do, we can always go get it from an asteroid. So we're going to take all the liquid chlorine that's lying around over here and dump it this side. I should really actually explain what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get this whole place self-sufficient so I never have to come back and worry about it again. I want this whole thing to just function without us ever having to look back at it so that we can concentrate on doing our next stage. Like Once that achievement is knocked out, which how are we actually doing on that front? Come on, let's see. And no change. What, 835 tons? What's going on with you guys? You should be out there mining. Oh, they're all in mid-flight. None of them are actually mining right now. Hmm. Soon. Soon they'll all get to their locations. But um, once that's all done, or once that's sorted, we're going to want to head over to the oil planet, which is Blum Oil, and start ripping it apart. And we're going to be spending 90% of our focus here, so we can't afford to have anything going wrong on our home planet, because we're never going to notice. So we can't have the crops mess up, we can't have carbon dioxide back up somewhere, we can't have liquids breaking in pipes. So the plan here is to make sure that everything that's left behind is completely self-contained, and we don't have to worry about it doing anything dumb. Which... I know, that seems like a lot, but it should be doable. Now, we're going to get all your chlorine over here. Yeah, just make it level 5. Done. So, any chlorine we mop over this side will get dumped over there and hopefully eaten by the dash of salt vine. And that is one spotlessly clean area. If we check the gas overlay here, you'll see pretty much all the gases are gone out of there. And any, well, some of them might eventually make it back over here to get removed, but whatever, we don't care. This place is quite chlorinated. But that's okay, that will get consumed at 6 grams per second by that dash of salt vine over there, which, yes, perfect, perfect. And we've set up major sweep commands to clear out the uh, whole bottom of our base. We've been, we put that on the long finger for so long because I wanted all that chill mass around the place to keep these bees from overheating. But now we don't really care so much. Plus, plus how much en enriched uranium do we have? Yeah, we got about 20 tons of the stuff lying around over there and... Oh, I'm going to say we've got about 400 kilos in each of these. Yeah, 400, 400, 400. Yeah, they're all about the same. So there's no worries about running out of uranium anytime in the next few hundred cycles. So, yeah, let's just tidy the place up, get all the water swept up, get this whole place just ship shape. Oh, and is our volcano almost ready? 3.3 .3 cycles until the volcano activates and we find out if this works. I think it should. Hmm. You know what? We'll find out. If it blocks itself up, we can always dig back in and make some changes. And God damn it. Yeah, it turns out uh, getting that tungsten and turning it into actual solid tiles or, or into metal without causing it to solidify and having to lose half the mass by digging out, really difficult. Really, really, really difficult. Um, hmm. You know what? I got an idea. Let's just speed this along because we know what's going to happen anyway. Oh, wait, that's all... No, I don't want to use that. I, I made all of these out of ceramic to try and help counteract this. Every time they get stuck in there, they just immediately solidify. So we're going to put them all in there, that way it should speed the whole thing along quite nicely. Alright, let's see, and... Yep, exact same thing down here. Well, and we've even managed to entomb someone, that's... kind of impressive. Hey, does, does someone want to get Millington out of there? Uh, let's uh, make that one right there a priority nine. Anyone? 
Guys. Bueller. Yep. There they go. They've shown up. Finally. That was uh, awkward. Whew. Why is everything on yellow alert? Damn it. Oh, yeah. Never mind. We'll switch you back to level 9. Done. Uh, I believe we have gate activation, which unlikely will find anyone good. Oh. 15 athletics? Yeah, but you got a bottom of the stomach and you're unconstructive. It's just at this stage, we can train people up to be whatever we want, so it's better to have the interests, I find. Uh, yeah, curative tablets. Sure, we'll take them. We we'll, might find a use of them at some point in the future. All right, with uh, hopefully the last of that tungsten gone. No, seriously, there's 800 kilos. Okay, is that the last bit? Perfect. We can we can delete that tile. That has actually been stifling the growth of one of our plants down there because it's been soaking up the rads. But it's fine. It's fine. And guys, God damn it, just keep digging out that tungsten. And the day has just switched over to 730. That is 365 cycles by two. So after two whole years, how many of the achievements have we gotten? Well, all but one. We were short by 21 tons. Ah, uh, that's... That's just sort of annoying. What's even worse is I sent off one of the rockets to mine and I didn't put a drill cone on top of them. I left them with their normal one, which means we should have an extra 20 tons done, which would actually put us at... 70, 999 and a half tons, which would be even better in just terms of like, mm, just so close. In fact, I think by the end of this cycle, we'd probably have knocked it out successfully, which would have been great. But no, we're 20 tons short because I messed up and put the wrong drill cone on one of the rockets. Hey, at least, you know, my instincts were right on how many rockets to send. It was just, I was slightly off on my instincts on actually capping the rocket correctly. Now, uh, let's see. This is where we uh, dump our excess petroleum that we don't need anymore. The the problem is that the stickers just keep filling this place up too much. Though I have been uh, maybe topping up our super coolant supplies. It's time to... Yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll swap out this loop of nuclear waste and we'll replace it with super coolant. Just because we can. I mean, these things... This thing has quite a high uptime. What's it? This is 89% uh, uptime over the last five cycles. Yeah, I think we can decrease that quite a bit. This one used to be about 33% uptime, and we're down to 26. So, wait, it saves us a bit of power. Though, ever since we put uh, our oxygen production right back on the... on powered by its own hydrogen, it has really cut down on all those annoying power problems we were experiencing. But, hey, since we're going to be leaving here in a while, we might as well make sure this place is going to run clean behind us. Coming up on the end of the cycle, after two full years of this... Well, okay, you know, two years in dupe terms. That's, that's like, it's like dog years or something. 989 tons. Ugh, okay, we were 11 tons short. 11 tons, and we're, well, the annoying thing is we've no more rockets on route. Like, for example, this one is about to run out of the drill. All the rest of them are either returning home or... What are you doing? Why are you not coming... Oh, you're still drilling as well, or... Just, just come home. Stop messing about out there. Uh, there you go. Then we have one other ship about to head out there. Where is it? This one will arrive in 1.1 cycles and finally knock out the last of that achievement. Everyone else is, yeah, unfortunately done with the day. It's oh, so close. I should have just built one more rocket. One more rocket and I could have knocked it out. But I, I could live with waiting an extra cycle or two. It's fine. A uh, quick bit of siphoning out all of the nuclear waste out of the cooling loop and replacing it all with super coolant. So, yeah, this is going to take a minute, isn't it? That's fine. We'll probably have enough super coolant. And what's the temperature in here? It's toasty, but not 100 degrees yet. So I don't think our nuclear reactor is going to pop anytime soon. Good for us. I think we can call that a success. Super coolant has replaced everything else. Uh, we can actually just set that to... To clear out the last of this, we just set that to zero. And what happens is all the, the little nuclear... Oh, wait. Maybe just leave that as it is for one second. I want to actually remove this. That pipe there can go, and that pipe there can do. Before we go doing the last of the cleanup. Now, we did have a bit of a problem here where the whole thing jammed up a bit, but that's okay. We had a plumber remove a few blobs of liquid to unjam it, and we put in this to give directional flow. And done, done, done. Change that to zero. Problem solved, and that'll get rid of the last of the gunk there, and then we can mop up and clean out the last of the system. You know, now that we've got rid of the nuclear waste, the super coolant has a much lower chill point, so we can start cranking that down a bit more. I'm thinking 25 would be... yeah, perfect. That'll give us a much cooler system. Then we give that about 20 cycles and see how she's doing. Yeah, okay, we can mop that up as well and take all that super coolant back to our main storage location, and... Dear God, 
Guys, guys, just sweep all that up and get it, get it stowed away. We have a whole bunch of sweeping to do. Yeah, our base is still absolutely covered in gunk, but... We're getting back more and more people every single day, which means we'll have more and more people to take care of all of these problems. I think we're just about to knock out that achievement. We're really close. Really, really close. 995 tons. Just five more tons of resources to go. And we should have at least one rocket mining. Yep, that one's made it. Logicalistic Neptune. And who's inside? Uh, Hubert, who's doing... Absolutely nothing. Yeah, we didn't actually get around to giving them a little wheel to run on. Uh, whatever. Everyone, this is one of the few rockets that isn't actually configured correctly. We're going to trash this one when it's, uh, when it's, the achievement is actually completed. We don't need it anymore. And over here, oh yeah, just give us one more minute. While we were waiting for that achievement to complete, another excellent thing has just happened. Seed analysis complete. We've got a sleep wheat grain that's exuberant. That's, mm, we've been waiting for those for a while. I actually keep this down here just so I can keep checking the seeds. These two are just here entirely for seed checking purposes. For example, if we get a, a bristle blossom that's exuberant, we go along and modify that. Now for sleet wheat, we've got ourselves a... Hey, where are we? 16 exuberant sleet wheat. Ah, lovely. Actually, we're going to have 18. So how many do we... How much do we have space for up here? You know what? Who cares? We're digging the lot up. We're replacing everything with exuberant sleet wheat. It grows four times faster. And combined with the farming station, that will double its growing speed to eight times faster. Yeah, that is a completely broken method of... And why is this all stifled? Low radiation levels. Ah, yeah. One second. I feel like I should uh, move all these hydrogen rockets now. I don't think we're going to be using this place for hydrogen rockets anymore. We're going to end up moving them over here to, you know, this location where they won't cause nearly as many problems. Probably run two rad and two hydrogen and leave it at that. We don't need this vast quantity. Plus, this will make farming over here much more, well, much less painful, let's just say. Oh, would you look at that. Colony achievement earned. The final, last, lastest of all of them. Oh, mind the gap. Done. Finished, completed, every single last one of them, all the way. Ah. Oh yeah, now what? I have never been much of an achievement hunter. Like, I think I did some achievement hunting on some of the old GTA games, but never really cared too much about them. This is one of the few games where I've actually bothered to knock all of them out. I love the way that the last four are all like 0.1% of players have achieved this, which... It's kind of strange. The one that weirds me out the most is, that's rad. Run a research reactor at full capacity for five cycles. 0.2% of players have achieved, have this achievement. That seems madness. Considering you can just chuck one in space and, well, I suppose if no one was trying. Yeah, never mind. So, that begs the question, what's the plan now? Well, the plan now is to take this colony and use it to expand out into the stars. What I really want to do is, well, the main two planets we want to work on to start are, what is it, Bloom Oil. Bloom oil here, we want to turn into a giant natural gas production facility via sour gas boiling. Uh, also, as well as that postulino, we want to actually set this up here to receive food so that we can start grinding out some resin and the... This has resin already. How does this have resin? Pre oh wow, a paku fry must have died in front of it and it just ate the paku fry? Or maybe it just eats paku and... You know what? Don't care. It's, uh, yeah, we need to set up something to get resin out of this so we can start making insulation. That will be very useful for making a sour gas boiler. Uh, as well as that, there is one last problem. I'm not sure how we're going to manage a giant interplanetary or, uh, colony when the automation signal system is not too good. The uh, problem here is if we go under automation and we go under the automation broadcaster, this only works over five tiles, which is a problem for us. So even if we put this, say, you know, yep, just put it there, that means it only has a reach of five tiles before we have to get some sort of relay system going. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that, that's fine from there, but the most central planet is probably Contrelia, and that means we could probably have an empire that goes, let's say, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can't even hit Tampona. So we could maybe keep these core planets in it, but anything beyond that is going to be a problem. So I'd prefer to find a mod that would allow us to extend the range to about 15 tiles. Otherwise, what we'll have to do is put in relay rockets. As in, park a rocket right here, one, two, three, four, and then have a... The, basically the automation broadcasters on there, and then they can broadcast onto Dampona, and then do something similar over to here and here, so we have rockets in intermediate spots to help boost the signal along the way. The problem with that is, well, you know, feeding and keeping those people good on the rockets would be difficult, unless you just didn't feed them and oxygenate them, in which case it would be a dead hulk in space, and it would still keep bouncing on the signal. I would prefer not 
to do that, if at all possible, but that may be our only method of sending the signal far enough. Uh, I'll have to do some testing on the site on that, or seeing if you can find a mod. Which reminds me, now that the achievements are done, you know what that means? I'm, I'm installing the, the pliers tool, just so that we can start cutting wires and pipes. Oh my god, that's going to make life so much simpler. But, we are finished in the achievements. Next up, a little bit of expansion I think is on the cards. I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.